Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday session in the experience of Namaste, the experience, the fire, the light of Namaste. Now, we're going to do something different, just a little bit different that I'm going to do every day, maybe, because I, I really like this. It's because I, I was watching a video the other day about Yogananda, and apparently Yogananda had a, a, a fun, unique way of starting his classes. And so we're going to do the same thing. And basically, there are going to be two things that I'm going to say, and both times your response will be awake and ready. So wherever you are, sitting, standing, I want you to just, if I say, how is everybody, you say, awake and ready. Okay? So I'm going to ask two questions. In fact, everybody, just for a moment, unmute yourself so we can hear each other. Everybody just go ahead and unmute yourself just so that we can mute ourselves when we're done. So if you're ready, here we go. How is everybody? Awake and ready. How feels everybody? Oh, oh, wait. Wait. Nice. Okay. That's how we start things. And ready. That's how Yogananda did it, so that's good enough for us. Now that we're awake and ready, let's dive in. Today, the last couple of days actually, have been a unique experience. I know some of you have gone through this experience as well, especially if you live on the West Coast. Um, it seems the whole West Coast is on fire right now. And we talk about fire a lot, being lit on fire, fanning the flames that are within us. But we're talking about fire that levels and destroys and, and changes lives. So many people in California that probably all of us know have lost their homes uh, to fires this year. Uh, my former home in Ashland, Oregon, just a couple of days ago, I have friends who lost their homes and fire just ripped through the area. And last night I was talking to my daughter in Portland and they were ready to evacuate if needed because fires were actually coming into Portland itself and into the suburbs. And, and it's an interesting time and it, it's, it does really feel like everything is on fire. And we can take this as a sign, if we choose, that this is the time for us to be lit on fire in a different way. For our spirits to become a blazing inferno so that no matter what happens, we are able to not only endure, but to allow it to open us and to transform us completely. So if we have any concern or, or any worries about any other people or ourselves, let's just use this opportunity to break through. And so this morning, I just spoke to my daughter to make sure everything was okay. This morning, I, I allowed this to come through in this light, in this fire. So take a deep breath. And this is your soul speaking to you. This is the I am presence that is all there is, speaking directly and intimately to you. I am guiding you into an experience that has no relationship to the one that you've been living till now. Does that fill you with great excitement or fear? If you're afraid you might lose something of value by accepting everything of total value, then you'll be very much afraid. But if you feel love filling your heart, knowing that you'll soon be free of all the chains you've wrapped around your soul, then you're ready to step, take a step with me. Time is not an element at all in this journey. If you're afraid or hesitant, I will surely return since this step is guaranteed, but it will not be at another time. It will still be right now. I like that. From your perspective, 
having given time great meaning and importance, it will seem like the future, and so it will be for you. But why wait? Why wait? What do you think will change between now and then? I'm asking you to take my hand and to step into an eternal embrace where there is no rust and no moths to destroy that which has always been yours. Why cling to a world where everything you seem to have can be lost in an instant? The world where I am leading you is beyond the reach of such things. If only you would trust me. I will not betray you, but you have betrayed yourself. Take the final step with me and see for the first time the kingdom where love never changes and your riches are shared for all eternity. Let's take a deep breath and welcome that message where your riches are shared for all eternity. Shared, that's the key. Not held, not protected, but shared. This is the new world that we're being guided into if we would but trust it. I really like this line earlier in the lesson where it says, if you're afraid you might lose something of value by accepting everything of total value, you'll be very much afraid of this. And this is what the split mind is all about being fearful of losing that which has no value, that which is like smoke here and then gone. But when you gain the confidence and have the depth of experience of knowing that which has true value, then you won't be afraid of losing anything. In fact, you'll realize that loss itself is impossible but you need to come to that experience. And that's why we focus on this every day, to allow an experience of holiness and grace to overtake you. So you'll know with total and complete confidence that the truth of who you are is unchangeable and unchanged, holy beyond measure, and that there's nothing that is real within you or for you that can never be taken away. Once again, if you're afraid that you might lose something of value by accepting everything of total value, then you'll be very much afraid. You'll be afraid when you hear the news of fires and, and drama and politics. You'll be very much afraid. But when you get to the point where you realize that the truth of who I am is uncompromised and uncompromising, and you can rest within that place, just rest within that place, then there is no fear, there is no windstorm, there is no fire that will interrupt the love that you feel and the freedom that you feel. And so this is the only state, the only experience that we're allowing to overtake us it has always been there. I, I like how it says a little bit later, if you're afraid or hesitant, I'll surely return. Since this is guaranteed, this step is guaranteed, I will return to you, but it will not be at another time. I'm not going to return later, at least from the I am perspective. It will still be right now. I'll still come to you right now. And it says, from your perspective, having given time great meaning and importance, it will seem like the future, and so it will be. So it will be for you, because that's what you've accepted is true. But it will still be right now. So why not accept this right now? Why not step into this light right now? You lose nothing, I promise you. You'll only gain everything but you're afraid of everything, or at least the perceptual egoic mind is afraid of everything. Everything. Why? Because it's afraid it's going to lose this tight little hold, this, this little tiny 
portion. He's afraid it's going to be taken away. But all we're being asked is to store up our riches where there are no moths and there is no rust to destroy. For where your heart is, so shall your riches be. Let's store our riches in the only place where we are, where, where we truly are, heaven itself, because you are there waiting for you. Did you hear that? You are waiting for you to return. That's the only thing you need to know. Because when you take a deep breath and allow that light to penetrate the armor that you've been weighing yourself down with all this time, then you feel that reality. You feel the approach of that home that you never left. So why not now? It's such a simple message. Why not now? So I'm going to turn to Christina now and see if Christina has anything that she would like to share about now. <laughs> now, yes, it's been an interesting experience, actually, since the beginning of the pandemic in recognizing the severe suffering that's happening in the world and feeling the empathy for that and at the same time recognizing that right here right now everything is completely satisfied um, taken care of fulfillment is here now and these times that we're in, there's not one human on the planet that is going to escape the opportunity that is being forced upon us to recognize what is really important. I had an experience yesterday that I was noticing the power of destruction now, meaning I, yesterday I had so many people reaching out to me, you know, Jimmy and I both lived in Oregon. I spent all of my adult life in Oregon before I came to California. And so I had people calling sobbing, you know, they've lost everything. And not just in one home of mine in Oregon, but many different places throughout the entire state. All the while California where I am is on fire. The whole West Coast is on fire. And as I was sitting and I was listening and being with what was at the moment with whoever was sharing with me, I recognized that the mind was in a place of shock. And in that place of shock where it could, it literally could not comprehend the immensity of the situation that is happening right now, there was only space. There was only emptiness. Because when we are in a place of where that fire has just burned everything that we thought we knew, the only thing that remains now is what's real, free of thought, free of projection, free of any amount of suffering. You know, the mind in its natural state is open and vast and receptive and unclouded. So it, it really showed me the power of these times on a massive scale. 
You know, we've each had our own moment or moments of our holy moments, right? Our points of recognition. But right now on such a mass scale, the human race is being given an opportunity that no one is going to escape from. And it's such a powerful time. And I know we came for this powerful time and we, we've been prepared for this time in the sense that, you know, every one of us on this call knows, even if it's only conceptually at this moment, that there is a reality beyond what my eyes see. And there is a part of me that knows that these next coming years are going to be more horrific in our eyesight than we have ever known in our, in this form now. But we've been given the capacity to recognize that there is a truth happening beyond the appearance. And it is us, it is we, that will and are helping people to recognize this truth as we go through this transformation. And yesterday I was sharing about, you know, the, mm, the crucifixion, the crucifixion that happens within each of us in our awakening, no one escapes it. And right now, each of us are being given the opportunity. And if we're not uncomfortable right now, we're going to be. And I just want to continue to encourage everyone to welcome it because it is the saving grace. It is the point of which we actively are able to choose love instead of fear and trust and allow that knowing to come from within. You know, it doesn't happen when we're comfortable and we have what we need and our food is, you know, prepared and, there's no incentive to look deeper. But right now we're all being given the opportunity to really put into practice what we've been learning, uh, remembering along the way. And the most powerful point always, the saving grace is now. Wherever my mind takes me in recognition and revelation, whatever comes through the information, the power and the return and the point of entry is now. This morning I lit a small piece of Palo Santo, which I do often. And I recognized the power of the fire. You know, we talk about the fire, Jimmy, you talk about the fire of like this light of inspiration. And for me, in my experience, I've always seen the fire as the destroyer. Not because I've lived through it being in Southern California, but because we don't awaken, we don't receive revelation, we don't, we don't come to understanding without some, something dissolving. Mm -hmm. And that dissolving takes place so naturally, but that is the fire. It is allowing all that we are not to be to be recognized first and then to be dissolved. And that's what happens. I mean, I'm looking at these pictures of my friend's homes and, and the fire, there's like, there's not even a trace of what was there. It's gone. 
And that's what happens within us. Our personality, our sense of me literally dies. It dissolves. And we don't have control of that. Grace is the giver and the gift. So as we recognize what's happening across the planet, or if we're just in our own little bubble, you know, dealing with our own little issues, the important, there's no place of greater importance than now. So may we continue to keep returning to now, live now, breathe in now, because everything else is, is an illusion that we create through our perception. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for allowing me to share, Jimmy. Oh, you're so welcome, dear. You know, this whole session can be summed up in just a few words. Welcome the fire right now. Let it burn. Let it burn away everything that we don't need. And you're right. It, fire is both a destructive as well as a positive warming force. It can destroy everything that is not needed so that we can see what is true and we need to welcome that and i think that's really the only lesson for us to learn right now is to welcome the fire that is burning through our lives and showing us who we really are who we've always been who we can't stop being and just to rejoice in that even even if it's difficult i, I we're, we're going to be looking back at the year 2020 for a long, long time, but I really believe that we're going to come to a point where we're not looking back on 2020 because of the pandemic or because of the politics or because of the fire. We're going to be looking at it and saying, this was the moment it all shifted. This is the moment when I and we all began to look at what was true and welcome only that. And, and if that's what this is for, then I say yes, and I think you're all with me, right? Are you guys with me? <laughs> Good, I knew you would be. <laughs>